this video we introduce the Lagrangian duality and we will also discuss the weak duality theorem. Consider the following optimization problem. We want to minimize f of x subject to we have several functional constraints in the form gi of x is less than or equal to zero. This is for i between 1 and p. And then we have some set constraints. x belongs to some set x capital. Here, of course, the function f is from rn to r. Then the function g, which combines gi's, is from rn to rp. And finally, the set X capital is a subset of Rn. Let's denote this problem by P capital. So next we'll write the Lagrangian of P, L of X mu is equal to F of X plus the summation of mu I's times G I of X for I between one and P. We consider the Lagrangian for mu greater than or equal to zero and for x in the set x capital. Essentially what we have done here, we moved the inequality constraints into the objective with some non-negative multipliers mu i's. It turns out the Lagrangian function can be used to conveniently represent the original problem p. So what we're going to do, we'll look at the supremum of the Lagrangian L of x mu for mu greater than or equal to zero. So we are trying to find the largest possible value for the Lagrangian when the multipliers mu are greater than or equal to zero. So this is the same, of course, as the supremum of f of x plus the summation for i between 1 and p of mu i's g i of x for mu greater than or equal to zero. And if we analyze carefully what are the possibilities here, so first of all, assume that we are talking about the feasible point x. If the point x is feasible, then all g i's are less than or equal to zero. And then if you are trying to maximize this function for mu i's greater than or equal to zero, then obviously having positive mu i's will only decrease the value of this expression. Therefore, the supremum will be achieved when all mu i's are equal to zero. So essentially you are going to get f of x whenever g of x is less than or equal to zero. So all g i of x must be less than or equal to zero. And then if at least one g i of x is positive, then what will happen by assigning mu i to some high positive value, we can increase the value of this expression to arbitrary large quantity. Therefore, the supremum of this, whenever at least one of the constraints is violated at x, is going to be equal to plus infinity. Now, looking at this expression here, the supremum of L of x mu for mu greater than or equal to zero is equal to f of x if you have the feasibility with respect to inequality constraints and plus infinity otherwise, it is clear that the original problem P can be rewritten as follows. Minimize the supremum of L of x mu where the mu is greater or equal to zero, and then we minimize over the set x capital. x belongs to the set x capital. So here we got rid of the inequality constraints g i of x less than or equal to zero by the expense of making the objective function more complicated. So instead of looking at f of x, now we are looking at the supremum for L of x mu over mu greater than or equal to zero. So what we did in this case, we essentially took the Lagrangian and we first maximized the Lagrangian with respect to mu 
and then we minimize with respect to x and we obtain the problem which is essentially equivalent to our original problem p. Now let's see what happens if instead of maximizing with respect to mu first and then minimizing with respect to x, we will reverse these operations and we'll minimize with respect to x first and then maximize with respect to mu. So we are looking at uh, minimizing with respect to x first. We are looking at infimum for x over the set x capital of L x mu. All right, and uh, let me spell out the Lagrangian explicitly again. We'll have infimum for x over the set x capital of f of x plus the summation for i between 1 and p of mu i's g i of x. And obviously, if we are looking at the infimum with respect to x here, the resulting function will be a function of mu. So let's denote this function by d of mu. Moreover, if we look at the expression under the infimum sign here, every function in this form is essentially an affine function of mu. So if we try to illustrate the process of constructing this function d of mu geometrically, then we have the axis for mu here. And then for every mu, what you will have is a line for every x in the set x capital. And you're trying to find the line that is the lowest at the given point mu. Obviously, as the infimum of a set of affine functions, our function d of mu is going to be concave regardless of properties of the set x capital. The x capital doesn't have to be convex. It could be actually a finite discrete set or it could be a continuous set. It doesn't really matter. Convex, non-convex, discrete, continuous in any case, d of mu is going to be a concave function of mu. Also, by the definition of the function d of mu, since it's the infimum of the Lagrangian with respect to x, d of mu is going to give us a lower bound on the Lagrangian. So d of mu is less than or equal to L of x mu for every x in the set x capital and mu greater than or equal to zero. Now let's consider the problem of maximizing of d of mu over mu greater than or equal to zero, which is the same as maximizing the infimum over the set x capital of uh, the Lagrangian L of x mu, and we are maximizing over mu greater than or equal to zero. Let's denote this problem by D. This is what we call the Lagrangian dual problem. We will also call the objective function D of mu of this problem the Lagrangian dual function. So let's uh, write down these uh, definitions here. So D of mu is called the Lagrangian dual function. We will also call the original problem P the primal problem in this context. And then, as we said, D is the Lagrangian dual to P. Now, if we try to summarize all we've done so far here to obtain an equivalent reformulation of our original problem, what we have done, we took first the supremum of the Lagrangian with respect to mu, and then we minimized the resulting function over X in the set X capital. And then to obtain the dual problem, what we did, we first took the infimum of the Lagrangian with respect to x, and then we maximized the resulting Lagrangian dual function with respect to mu. So let's uh, write down what we have here. So we started with the Lagrangian L of x mu. And then on the one hand, when we were doing the reformulation of our original problem, what we did, we first took the supremum of L of x mu with respect to mu greater than or equal to zero. 
And uh, the first step when we were formulating the dual was to take the infimum of L of X mu with respect to X in the set X capital. And obviously here we'll have the inequality sign. The infimum is going to be less than or equal to the supremum. And uh, obviously we take the infimum in and supremum over the two different sets of variables, right? So, but now when we look at uh, the infimum of the supremum here with respect to X in the set X capital, then we obtain the equivalent reformulation essentially of the original problem, right? And uh, this inequality still holds because if uh, this inequality holds for every X and mu, then if we take the infimum with respect to X and the inequality will still hold, right? And now if I add the supremum here with respect to mu greater or equal to zero, then of course the inequality will still hold once again, all right? So now if we assume that my dual problem has an optimal solution mu star, and my primal problem has an optimal solution x star, then what we have here is this is equal to f of x star, because again, remember the problem of minimizing the supremum of L of x mu, we have shown here that it was equivalent to the original problem P. And then this here, Again, assuming that mu star is the optimal solution of the dual problem, here we'll have d of mu star is equal to this. And now we are ready to state the weak duality theorem. So if x star is a global optimal solution of P and mu star is a global optimal solution of D, then we have the following inequality. D of mu for any mu is less than or equal to D of mu star, obviously because mu is just a feasible solution of the dual and the mu star is the optimal solution of the dual and dual is a maximization problem, right? So this is less than or equal to f of x star, which is less than or equal to any feasible f of x, because x star is the global minimum for our problem p, and this inequality holds for any mu greater than or equal to zero, and any feasible x of the problem p. So we have this inequality and in particular the optimal objective value for the dual is less than or equal to the optimal objective value for the primal. And the difference between these two values f of x star minus d of mu star is what we call the duality gap. In particular, when the duality gap is zero, then we can find the optimal objective value for our primal problem by solving the dual problem. And recall that our dual problem is a concave maximization problem, which is equivalent to a convex minimization problem. Even when the duality gap is positive, it still provides a non-trivial and very useful lower bound on the optimal objective value of the primal problem. 